that was some church, Reverend Nelly. Amen, amen. So first of all, I want to say, I'm an emotional creature today. So that sermon ending was not my best ending of my life. <laughs> Did you guys get what the heck I was trying to say? Yes. Okay. Can I tell you? You don't have to fake me out, but if I'm saying something that makes sense, I'm a black preacher. Give me some signals, okay? <laughs> don't be looking at me. Don't be Presbyterian up in here like, like don't give me this. Oh, Thank you, baby. <laughs> y'all, I be like, I'm like throwing it down and y'all be like this. Y'all be like this. That was very lifty. <laughs> <laughs> give me some, give me some feedback, okay? All right. Like you can be enough, you can do that. Just give me some. some love that be quiet. <laughs> that was like, man, we won't ever do that. You quit. Anyway, that was a weird ending. I apologize. I would not do that ending when I teach a homiletical class. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Wasn't that fun? That. <laughs> It was great. It was beautiful. Thank, Thank, you, thank you for that. Yeah. So what are you thinking, Missy? What's going on? Ooh, girl. Girl? So, so let me just say this. I love these conversations when I have a chance with Natalie and Amanda, staff to chew it up. We have a theological talk once a month, mm -hmm. but that's not every day. Natalie and I are both womanist theologians, which means we're following up in the Alice Walker school of all the people be liberated, um, um, freedom for our cousins that are Palestinian, Jewish, and everything, wrestling with these liberation texts, squeezing out some white supremacy out of the texts. That's what womanism means. Mm -hmm. So now, with that in mind, would you like to go first? Um, no, but I'm, I do want to say this. <laughs> <laughs> but I do, I do want to say this one thing. Um, in that, that scripture that you read, that Amos piece, mm -hmm. the part that stuck out for me is right before mm -hmm. uh, the, the waters and all mm -hmm. the things. Mm -hmm. It's about like, it says something like, ooh, I'm going to read it because I don't... Yeah. You know, I like to be precise. <laughs> and Natalie also like is a visual learner. I, I am. Take away from me the noise of your songs. Mm -hmm. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. Woo! There is something in that for me about the performative nature. Yes. Right? Of, of um, our justice work. Yeah. Right? Like, how are you actually showing up? Is it the black square on the Instagram? You did something. You know what I mean? Right, right. Um, what, what is it that actually f looks like it's doing something or sounds good, right. but isn't really um, participating in the work? Yeah. The TM work. You know what I mean? That's like, so beautiful. I'm just really curious mm -hmm. um, about moments where we are performative versus... Um, really in, in the mess of it, right? Like following, as uh, Dr. James Cohen would say, following Jesus all the way to the cross, right? Like right. what does that look like and how is that different um, than the noise of the harp or the, no the noisy songs or whatever right. that the scripture's talking about? I think it's an excellent question, Natalie. And one of the things that I was struck by when I was doing this exegetical work is how much exactly this text is like that Isaiah 58 text. Mm. And they're written at different times, right? Mm. Um, but the sense that, you know, Isaiah literally says, I don't, I despise your feasts. I despise your, vest, yeah. your festivals. And he ends up with um, basically uh, care for your kin, feed the hungry, clothe the naked. Then your light will rise like the dawn, right? Then you'll be called repairers of the breach, that text in Isaiah 58. So both of these prophets are, are, are kind of saying the performative worship, they're really being particular. The performative worship is not what, it, is not what time it is. A lot of scholars have, in this Amos text, written, well, then let's change our worship. Let's make sure that we don't use harps, or, you know, like, that kind of thing. Like, that's... No, seriously. <laughs> no, really, right? Like, that's so not what it is, right? That's so not what it is. What it really is, is your, your festivals, your feasts, your worship time ought to be like uh, punctuation marks mm -hmm. on the life you're living. So in other words, we live these lives of justice and love, making the world a better place. And then we're in a room singing in, like we did today because it's like a joyful response to the work we're doing. Right? And it inspires you it inspires, into that exactly. work, right? It like helps exactly. uh, fortify and fuel you. Exactly. You know, like any of the times that we've been marching, right. all of these songs really help us they do. to get all the way down to the end. Because those marches, have y'all done these marches? I know I've marched with some of you, but these marches are not short, right? And sometimes it's cold outside. And sometimes, you know, like, how do we keep our 
spirits high, right. right? So in those senses, it is not a performative thing. It's in a, this moment, we it's are a sustaining to, thing. Yes. All of those civil rights marches, all of those songs being sung out of the sanctuary and into the street, we've done that. Mm -hmm. Leave our thing, go in the street for pride. Leave our stuff, go die in the streets for Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. We go down the climate march everywhere. Even the secular people were singing when we got in my big old long script that's going up on the table, you know, getting arrested for climate with uh, Jane Fonda. She's not a person of faith, so to speak, but she was leaning into those songs, right? Yeah. So there is something about worship that acknowledges the worship mm -hmm. of God, which is what it, it really means. Something about religion, which means to bind us together, is what it really means, that are accompaniment, accompaniments for the work of tikkun olam, of healing the world. Yes, there's something yeah. you're saying about worship that I want you to say a little more okay. about, right? Yeah. Um, because then worship means something different, right? right? It's not... Um, it's not a gig. Yeah, it's not a gig. It's not like, you know, come see this amazing show, even though the choir here is fierce. Yeah. You know, like, come, yes, we want... But what, it, what is actually stirred in you and what, what does that cause you then to do? Right. And how do you then, by nature of what you do, pour back into this space? Yeah. And we're doing kind of this like in and out, back and forth, yeah. you know, sort of thing yeah. Yeah. that really does um, build community, that right. does fortify the movement, that yeah. does do the work that God has asked us to do, that, that causes us to be God's hands and God's yeah. feet in this world that, that, that um, makes heaven on earth that is God's kingdom come and God's will be done, right? Yeah, like, that's right, love. What does that worship look like? Thing, then? One of the things that I think, one of the things that you all don't know, all of you, is how much Natalie, John, um, Mike, uh, I'll have to, how much the worship team really pays attention to the whole thing as a sermon. Mm -hmm. Like the, the, from soup to nuts, from top to bottom, we're always trying to make a coherent experience that is um, good enough, healing enough for introverts and extroverts, that, that if you didn't get to hear that part, you felt this part. If you didn't hear that part, you saw that part. Even the way we leave the children in worship, all of this is to story the reign of God on earth. So what I would say is, in, in a very real sense, this sanctuary is too small for me today. Mm -hmm. When the choir can't be in the room, mm -hmm. when the choir is singing their hearts out, mm -hmm. and they're not having a chance to have that do loop that Natalie's describing. Right? And in a long, long time ago at Middle Church, before John, I'll say, there were times when, there were times in our life when the choir really felt that it was a gig. They would come and sing and go, so, right? And, that, and that's not true anymore at all. And so I feel sad that, just, just to say out loud, I feel sad in the moment where they aren't able to be in here knowing what they fed, hearing what they fed, feeding it back to us. So uh, maybe, maybe to make it shorter, Natalie, there's a really beautiful, like Helen's song, that song killed me. I, I, saw, I wasn't sure I could talk. I was so upset today. Mm -hmm. Those numbers represent lives. Those stats were 30 years of conflict. And that is not showing up on the news because nobody gives a crap about brown bodies mm -hmm. in conflict in places where they're extracting stuff to make iPhones. That is not important. Mm -hmm. Holy cow. It broke my soul. Right? It broke my soul. And so Helen's, the music heals. The peacemaking heals. What we're trying to do at worship here is to narrate for you your role in the healing of, of the reign of God. Like there's a lot of words to say today. When I'm trying to say, come to the conference, that, that puts you in the script. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm going to say, how do you spend your money? That puts you in the script. In other words, this sermon or these worships are not just like, Ooh, that was lovely, fabulous. But what does it take home to do? We're always trying to do that. And I think that's an important non-performative piece yeah. is that this is the whole show. Mm -hmm. We're not the show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the whole show. Yeah. yeah. And it's also a, pr a practice. Practice, right? right. Worship is, is also a, a <laughs> chance to practice one, the presence of God, and also practice beloved community. Right. Right? Like what King has taught us about what that should be. This, this is once a week you get to go one place where everybody doesn't look like you, 
Everybody's not working on the same thing. You work on it, work. It's, 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 they're not your neighbor, but they are your neighbor, right? Exactly. They're not, they don't look like you, but they do. You know, like you, right. you get like to you. practice this moment of beloved community right. and radical welcome, right? And fierce revolutionary love. This is where you practice that at least once a week. And hopefully right. you come to some other stuff and you'll get to practice with this throughout the week as well. But if not, there's one time a week where you know you get to say, okay, let me see what this is like to do this and get some reminders about what it feels like so that I can then go and apply that out in the world, right? And you might stumble along the way during the week, but then you come back here and get a little refortification right. again, get another chance to practice, to continue to tune yourself. Do you follow what I'm saying? I love what like, you're saying about that. This is how you get to get a little bit closer yeah. to what it is that we're being called to do in this world. Nellie, I love the way you said that as a practice. And I think, you know, particularly in your role, um, like we hired Natalie to be a digital minister when she first graduated from seminary and she asked for that job and it was not a job yet. But she was kind of on a, on a leading edge about like there's going to be a need for this digital space. So I want to say there's a Sunday connection and then there's the all week long opportunity to practice. That's, that's why we make the pieces. That's why we put it in your inbox. Now you subscribe to middle substack or my substack and you'll get the stuff. Then you have a clip and you're like, I like that one. You play that. Maybe you send that to your Uncle Bob. I always have an Uncle Bob in my mind. And then you say, Uncle Bob, I, I really was moved by this clip. What do you think about it? Now you have a way to talk to your family. You get Teak's baptism in your inbox and you're like, Look, see what I'm saying? My church are baptized. Uh, you know, what does baptism mean? We're trying to instruct you. We're trying to catechize you into a practice of love. And we want to make sure you have resources and tools, not just on Sunday. Yes, on Sunday, but also a whole catalog of things to use. Can I switch gears? Yeah, amen. And only just because we're going we're gonna to try to keep them short. I want to make sure we talk about, because it's just a different format, I want to talk about Middle's particular way of having more than one text in the room when we're preaching, when we're doing music, right? Um, we have the text, we're going to say we have three, and we probably have more, but I'm going to do three. We really do try to have, Natalie, right, all of our preachers, a rigorous engagement with the, with the text. We got, we got commentaries, we got scripture, we're... We're going to dig into some Hebrew. We're going to figure out what that word means. We're nerdy about exegesis is what it's called. Like, this is what it says. And then how does that apply today? Our chair, Vicki Burns, always congratulates us on it was then and now, and that we make that. So that's one text, that ancient text. The other text that we do is the world, the text of the world. And some churches don't do that. They'll say that's political. And we say Jesus is political. I'm, I'm instructing now. He was an outsider in a time like this, in, in empire, in disenfranchisement, right? In colonization, like so, in so many ways, Jesus, the Jewish Palestinian, poor baby, homeless baby, refugee baby, grew up to be a carpenter type, nail hitter preacher. <clears throat> that real human being lived in this, a time of occupation. We have to know that his ministry was political, that his preaching was political, that if we fed the people, that was a politic. We have to know that, and therefore we do that. And if y'all watch and think, we're too political, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> when Natalie runs for president, we'll talk about it. But not yet, not too political yet. Because it is, as womenists, we would say the personal is political. Feminists would say, so that's the, tech, the, the second text. The third text is you and, and me. Like, my longer manuscript has a story in it of, I hope I can tell them, but I, I'll look at them, and then I won't say their names. But I had a really beautiful two-on-one -on -one with our members, two of our members. We've been trying to get together forever. And we did, and, and out of that grows, what am I dreaming about, right? And it grows, I'm going to use my art to do something. So now I have a proposal in my inbox of a Lenten study that is about visual art and poetry. Yes. What the? Right? Right? What the? Jesse and Sarah, it's all of you, right? It's, it's Laura is my closet, not so closeted, consultant on therapy. Someone says I need a referral, I call Laura Kogel, right? 
those of you who are singing, those of you who are teaching, those of you who are writing. In other words, your text, my, all my elders and deacons, the butterfly, all your text is part of the three texts. The ancient story, which features the text of Jesus. The current world, which, which sometimes is text of terror and sometimes text of joy. But your body is a living text. Do you hear what I'm saying? When you come here, when you come here, <clears throat> and I'm teary when I see your little beautiful diverse butts. You don't have to come to the diverse place. You can go to the all queer church. You can go to the Chinese church. You do not need to come sit with people who don't look like you, but you do. And you are beautiful to me. And we want you to feel your life is a living text. And we're trying to help you write the story for yourself that you want. That's my psych, right, Pam? Like, this ain't therapy, but it's whole-making, we hope. Mm. What do you think about that, love? I think so many things. Let me think about what I think. I think, um, <laughs> yes. We, so you and I, we exegete, exegete the, the scripture, and the context is really key. Like, what's happening in that time period that it was written is so key. And then um, when it comes to Jesus particularly, what were people saying about him that they felt were so important that they said it over and over and mm -hmm. over again until somebody wrote it down, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? right? Now, whether Jesus said it or not is, is not the actual point here, right? But what was so important mm -hmm. that they were like, this person is doing something and, and, and using this in a way that, undermines all of empire and what um, we have all had to, what we've, we've all been subjugated to up yeah. to this point, right? right? We have this person who, is, who we are calling the son of God, son of man, which wasn't a term that you used for a person other than the empire, right? right. Like right. other than the emperor. Right. And so there's a way that it is even more political than the acts, right? Like mm. it's also like the language that's being used that's, that's circumventing on every single level, right? And then the third thing about what you all bring in this space is that you are also in any given moment wrestling with these three different things right. as well, right? Like whatever the thing is, with, is within you, whatever you just wrote, read in the uh, New York Times, and then how you have worked out your own salvation with fear and, as I say, trembling boldness, right? Like how have you, how have you understood um, your faith and your spirituality based on what you got when you were a kid and then based on what you did with that as you grew up, right? Like some of that we knew we had to spit out. Gotta spit out the bones sometimes. Some of that's not good for you. And you know, okay, let me rethink about this because God is not Santa Claus. Those two things aren't the same. Right. Or this is not a genie. And like there's been some conflation here. So then you are doing the same wrestling every single moment of your life of these three moments that Jackie's talking about. And then you bring that into here right. and it is all part of the... Stew? Yes. <laughs> I like it. I Stew's know. good. Yeah. The melting yeah. pot, you know, yeah. like, I don't know. Yeah. I'd love the melting pot analogy, but like, all, we bring all of that. Yeah. So we're all like that. Did you ever read that book, Stone Soup? Yes. That book? That book. It's that. It's yes. that. It we that. all are coming and we're bringing like our own little ingredients to make this beloved king, our beloved community. That's right. That King was talking about. That's we right. all are bringing our own particularities. We don't have to leave anything out. Right. And because we don't leave anything out, the, the soup is delicious. Right. That's right? right. And nourishes everybody. Right. And there's enough for more than just us. We bring to the storehouse our little bit of it. Right? And that ends up covering us forever. I love that, sweetie. I love that, Natalie. I really do. And I want to say one more thing and see if there's somebody who wants to say something back to us. But yes. And also what's true is, okay. And also what's true is, um, maybe we're going to just do this talk because it's a lot of y'all and you got to go. But uh, we'll do it again because we're having one in February. Yes. Um, it's messy. Yes. The soup is delicious. <laughs> The soup I mean, is there's delicious. a stone like, in it. It's so. like, <laughs> but it's like puttanesca. Yeah. Like, you know, like when you make a pasta, you're like, let me put some carrots in here and mm. let me throw some onion. Let's see, might taste good, might not. So there's some salt, might be too salty for somebody. Because I'm just trying mm. to pick up your soup mm -hmm. analogy. Mm -hmm. That today's soup might feel salty to you, right? And that's okay. Hopefully you'll come around again next week and you'll, that's exactly, I like a little sweet with my salt. I don't make pasta unless it got some sugar in the sauce, okay? Sorry, John. 
But um, so like the idea of taste and what we can do and what we feel good about, which makes it want to just push ourselves out to, we are sitting in a Jewish temple. Yes. And our Jewish temple friends have are probably watching, hi, some of them. And um, we're not everybody's everything, mm. right? And I want us to feel comfortable with that. I, I want you to feel comfortable when it doesn't feel comfortable. Every now and then I'll bet you read something Jackie wrote. Was like, that was a little tangy. <laughs> tangy, Jackie, thanks. You know, it's okay to not feel comfortable. It's okay if it feels so uncomfortable that you have a question, I think we want you to talk to us about it. What did you mean by that? Can you help me see that? I would love that. Engage me on the self social media. It's okay. People are learning how to do this. There's a whole tribe of people who are just being stank on social media. <laughs> like, Nikki Haley said some craziness the other day, and I simply wrote, because I thought it was a good question, what? Who are you? I wrote that. I did. Because <laughs> I didn't really want her to call me back, you know? Like, if, you want me to call, if you want me to call you back, you won't say that, right? You'd be like, Reverend Jackie, can we talk? I was like, what? Who are you? And somebody went crazy. I was like, is it her boyfriend? Is it her like, ex-lover from India? I don't know. I mean, he lost his mind. He cursed me out. I'm talking with curse words. He cursed me out so good and called me a racist, anti-Jewish B-I-T-C-H on my page. Because I said, what? Who are you? To a woman, I don't know. OK, so, so there's that. But then there are some people who will write and say, I'm not trying to push you back, but that's interesting. And you are pushing back. I would like us to be a community of it's okay to push back. Mm -hmm. I'd like us to be a people who teach each other that our love for each other doesn't mean we 100% agree. Mm -hmm. And, and what, just because we don't. And what's true, so you know, is I'm the theologian in residence in, the, in this place, right? I'm the public theologian. I get that job description, which is to say I help pace our theology, right? But I'm never pacing our theology without talking to Natalie or Amanda or you know, our team. We are together creating a theological platform from which we go do the immigrant work, from which we go teach a class, from which we mentor Do you understand what I'm saying? We, together, are creating a theological base that we're calling Middle's Theological Base. That's important for you to know. And in that theological base, we are fully throated against anti-Semitism. Yeah. Period. Period. <laughs> like, like, if I was on the TV, I would not equivocate, right? I would say, hell to the no about anti-Semitism. But I would also say, standing for Palestine is not anti-Semitic. <laughs> so, so that's what it is. We don't want you to quit the church because you disagree with us. But that's what we think. We think that there is room to hold Congo and Sudan and Freaking Afghanistan and you know Haiti and Israel and Palestine and Gaza and New York and Detroit still doesn't have clean water. I mean, come on. Yeah. So what I want you to hear me tell you is we're some both and people up in here, and that's who we are. That's what it means to be haha in the middle. What do you want to say about that? I don't want to say no. You got that. I'm, I got that? I'm all okay. over that. Yes, okay. I think that there's an energy where we do think. Um, do you remember that movie, Everything Everywhere All at Once? Yes, yes. I we do have that problem. We, we think we have, and we're trying to be like Walmart, the one stop shop. Like, you gotta, like, <laughs> and that is not, like. That's not flourishy. Yeah. yeah. Like, what does that then do to you? Like, right. who, how, how do you be human beings? How do you be a whole person if you're trying to be all of the things that all of the world is asking, right? And again, going back to this beloved community idea with, that King gave us, this is why it's so important that we do things in community together. Because right. right. I can be over here doing this while you're over there doing that, right? Speak. And then this, you're going to be over there. You know, like, so we can call. I know who to call or who to reach out to to be like, hey, listen, I'm not going to make it. But can you? And that right. person can take it as far as they can take it. And then they call the next person and so on and so forth so that we then are able to continue our thriving. So we then do have enough. That is so important that you said that. I'm going to make this the last word unless you want to say something more. What Natalie just said is so important, and I think it's a growing edge for us, mm. that we are both wanting to say we're holding all the things, and we're also not holding all the things the same way. We're not. Mm. Like, we want you to, part of the way we're holding things is we're educating. Yes. Can, can you feel that? So when I say this much in the Sudan and this much in the Congo, 
you can go look that up and find it. Like, wow, okay, I want to find a way to get involved with that. Like next week, it might be immigration because we are doing that. You know, Amanda is really holding that down. Thank you so much, Reverend Amanda, uh, in this really beautiful way with Judson. And I'm not saying Amanda by herself. I'm saying she's staffing that, right? Yeah. Many of us are holding immigration and holding um, refugees. And many of us are holding Black Lives Matter still because they don't, right? And many of us are holding the energy. So you find your place, I like to say, where your heart is cracked wide open. Mm -hmm. And join us in that place for yes. you. Might be about kids, might be about you know, breast cancer. Whatever it is, you hold that place for us because we can't run around to all the things so we can take a picture of it. It's what Reverend Adams said. <laughs> and also, like, I think that there was a time where... When I was young and foolish? No, where I think that like <laughs> we used to feel like we had to answer the question, tell us what to do. Right. What do you want us to do? Just tell us what to do. Right. And I think we are in a different place now. How would you describe it? Well, I we're saying right. here, here is, so there's, there's a, a preacher who says our, the job of ministers is to um, tell, show the people Jesus and let them decide for themselves whether they would crucify him again or not. Ooh, that's good. Right? So it isn't about me saying, oh, no, no, don't, don't do that. Like, oh, no, no, oh, you should do this. But here is what it is. Here's what the thing is, which you do so well, right? Like, here's what it is. You all are in the world and you have all of these pieces, again, right. that you are working out on your own. What does it then tell you to do? Be Versus Jackie telling life. you, yes, you need to, you know, X, yeah. Y, and Z this Beautiful. thing. So what is the thing that you feel called to do as a result of being in this space with all the people who are doing all the things that who look right. completely different than you do? That's beautiful, Natalie. Being theologians in your own life, being ethicists in your own life, mm -hmm. right? Being activists in your own life, in your own way. We're going to keep giving you tools. We're going to keep bringing yeah. it to the table. Bring it and bring it to bring it, bring it to the storehouse because people right. will go with you, yep. and then that's when it is filled, right? That's right. That's right. In the benediction today, I was supposed to tell Mike put up the thing about tomorrow, but I didn't because we were having it was too much going on. There it is. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. I love you so much. So this is happening tomorrow, and what's really wonderful is that. Laura Kogel sent this to me, and I had seen it, but I did not know I was speaking at it. <laughs> so the way it goes is, Laura sends this to me and goes, this is really interesting. I'm like, that's great. And then Amanda goes, I think you're speaking at that. I'm like, am I? Fantastic. <laughs> so, so like it takes a village to raise a Jackie. Okay, but it, but it takes a village for all of us to know what's the next thing to do, right? Um, so we'll be that resource for you, but our job, is for you to lead yourself with the tools we've given to the reign of God on earth and to bring your people with you. Yes. That stand up, when we sing that John, stand up, bring your people with you from Harriet. So, so let me just ask Amanda to come over here for real quick. Let me ask Zane to come here for real quick. Who else is in the room is on staff? Ellen's Ellen. not here. Okay. They're probably down the okay, way. Okay, they're down the way. Let me ask the board to just stand up where you are. Stand up, board, where you are. Okay? Look at the camera for just a second. I'm sorry to put you on the spot. But so people can see what we're trying to be with this, with this, with this group of people and you. You are the ones we've been waiting for. Thank you for staying today. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.